In a world dominated by Outlook and Google Calendars, one of the best calendars around, Apple Calendar, often gets forgotten. And yet, this is probably one of Apple's most solid, dependable time management apps they've ever developed. And it's been around a very long time. So today I thought I would put together a video to show you just why Apple Calendar is so much better than Google or Outlook calendars and how to import both Google and Outlook calendars into Apple Calendar so you can use this tool every single day. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing to do when you start using Apple Calendar is set up your calendar, of course. Now, iCloud is probably, for me, it's actually the best calendar to use. I don't need all the extra functionality that Google Calendar and Outlook Calendar brings. So I have all mine set up in iCloud, which is just an automatic thing. It just happens. And as you can see here, iCloud, it's already telling me that I've got my calendars are already up. However, what happens if you want to bring in a calendar like your work calendar, or say you want to use a Google Calendar within Apple Calendar? Well, you can do that. All you need to do is add, click on the button from settings and add iCloud or Microsoft Exchange or Google or Yahoo or AOL or any other account. The other account may be something unique. So for example, here in Korea, we have a very common internet domain server called uh, Naver and I could set up a Naver calendar through my Apple calendar. I don't, but I could do if I wish. Now, if you're opening, if you let's say, for example, you've got a Google calendar, one quick tip here is make sure you turn on calendars because if you don't turn that on, it won't show up in your Apple calendar. So you need to make sure that calendars are turned on. Okay, that's the first thing to do. Let's open up the calendar now and let's get started and showing what you can do. So here's basically a mirror copy of my calendar for this week. Now, it is pretty much exactly what I am doing. However, being Wednesday, <coughs> I should point out that that is here. So that's already here. So this is basically my calendar as it stands for this week. Now, Let's just do the two parts of this first. Now, one of the things that I've had people say is, uh, why does your calendar show the week and mine doesn't? Well, up here at the top, you can change the view. You can have a day view, a week view, a month view, which makes things very tiny and small. You could even have a year view. The view I prefer is the week view because that shows me how my week is looking. It's showing me how balanced it is. Now, in here, we have two areas. We have the time-specific area, which is the hours down here, as you can see, and we have the day-specific. Now, let me first cover day-specific. What do we use day-specific for? Well, I recommend using day-specific for what I call day-specific information that you need. For example, every Monday, every sixth of the month, I need to send money to my Korean holding company here, which is called FES, so I need to send that money. It's not a big task, but it's, it's critical that I send it on that day. It takes about three minutes, but that's something I need to send. I don't want to forget that. So what I get here is, it repeats monthly, it's always the six, repeats monthly, and I get an alert. I've set an alert up. This comes up on my phone. I cannot miss it. It comes up on the day of the event at 9 a.m. Now I have a choice. I can have it come up a day before, a two days before, or even a week before. I have a choice and I can actually set a custom date as well. For something like this, it's a three minute task. I just need to know that today is a six and I've got to send it. Uh, other date specific information, my wife on Tuesday yesterday was actually in Seoul all day and I put that in my calendar so I know not to plan anything to do with my wife that day. Eighth, I pay my credit card. Now another one that you can do here is like if you've got a deadline for a project. Now I know a lot of people I've seen, like, I wish there was start and, and start and due dates in my task manager. Now I've never needed them because I've always used my calendar to tell me the due dates because the due date doesn't necessarily mean I'm gonna do anything. It's just something I need to know. So again, I've got here my due date here. Now the thing is I've set the alert to warn me 
two days before because if I've forgotten about this, I get the alert, it'll come up on Wednesday and that means, okay, I need to cancel all my appointments on Tuesday, Thursday and get this project done. And that's one of the reasons why I do it. Another one here is I'm going to a Sam Ryder concert on Friday. I need to be aware of that. That's gonna come up on the day. I think it's, uh, yeah, one day before. It's gonna warn me on the Thursday before. But I also need to be aware that it takes two and a half hours to drive to Seoul. We're staying overnight at my parents-in-law's house and I'll be driving back on Saturday morning. These things I do need to be aware of and they are time specific. So that's the basics of the calendar. Now, how do you create calendars and what kind of calendars should you create? Well, I always say to people, start off with something simple. Just have your work and personal calendar set up. So I've got here at work, which is in orange or yellow, and my personal calendar. Now I do have additional calendars. I have coaching, which for you may be meetings. These are when I do my coaching calls, but they may be meetings for you and I do my exercise. I like to see that I'm doing enough exercise and stuff during the week. Now, with something like this, um, all I need to do is now just make sure that I'm adding the right color so I can see that there is some kind of balance in my week. Now, how do you change the color of these calendars? Because another question I'm often asked is, well, if you right click on the calendar, you can change the color. You can choose any of the seven colors you get, or you can create a custom color if you prefer. That's really very simple to do. Just change the color. And by the way, if you're using iCloud on your phone, if you're using the calendar on your phone, on your iPad, this will just globally change automatically throughout your system. So those are the basics of the calendar. Now, one of the things that I would say that you do, let's just go into one of these, uh, one of these uh, tasks and we see what the things that we can do. Of course, we can set it as an L day. If I tap that, it's gonna drop up, up to the top here. Start date, uh, start time and end time, of course. You can set the, uh, the time zone, um, whatever I want to do. I can set that to repeat, which I usually do in my real calendar. This repeats every Monday. But one of the advantages of using iCloud, now if you're using a Google Calendar or uh, Outlook Calendar, this is not going to be a, an option. This only works if you're using iCloud Calendar, but you can set the travel time. Now, this isn't necessarily going to work for writing because I do this at the office, but let's say, for example, here, I need to travel to take my dog for a walk. I can take him to the park. So the travel time is usually around about 15 minutes. So I can just tap that 15 minutes. I don't need, uh, I can set an alert and I usually set my alerts 15 minutes before because that gives me, okay, I should probably, if I've got 15 minute travel time, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna tell me 15 minutes before that session that I need to set off that this, uh, that I need to leave right now. And that's great, you can do that there. Now the great thing is, let's just say on, on Thursday, I decide I want to take my dog a little bit further away to a different park and I know the travel time is going to be 30 minutes. When I do that you can actually see 30 minutes travel time. It's giving me that warning that I have travel time. Now as I say this only works if you're using iCloud Calendar. It does not work even if you brought Google Calendar into Apple Calendar or whatever it does not work. It only works with Apple Calendar, iCloud Calendar I should say. So those are the basics of doing these calls. Now, what I want to do is just go into the, 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 the fundamentals of using a calendar. One of the things, reasons why I have these like here uh, alerting me at 9 a.m. is if you notice on my calendar at 9 a.m. except for Saturday, and I only need to remember Remembrance Day, uh, I always have a 30 minute break. So that is the time that I'm checking these ones because I've got the alerts, they've come up on my phone, they come up on my computer. It's great because I cannot miss them. It's just a, a habit at 9 a.m. I check my all day events to see if there's anything I need to be aware of. And so as I say, you've got all this information in like a dashboard, it's right in front of you. I don't ever put specific tasks in here. That's what my task manager is for. But what I do is if you see here, I've got writing. Now my task manager labels or tags in reminders, for example, match these blocks. So I've got project, I've got writing, I've got audio visual, I've got communications and I've got admin. So what you'll see is that all my tags match these time blocks. That way, 
all I need to do is say, okay, I'm writing, then I can go to reminders and it'll tell me these are the writing tasks you want to perform today. That's just a quick tip for you is match the tags in reminders to the time blocks that you have on your calendar. Now, I would also strongly recommend that you do whatever you can to block two hours out in the morning for focused work. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're in sales or whatever you're doing, find two hours in the day where you can do quiet, relaxing quiet focused time. When I was teaching at university I often had classes teaching between 9.30 and 12.30 or in that particular situation my focus blocks were in the afternoon. So you've got to work with your own schedule but whatever you're doing try to find two hours somewhere where you can do focus time. You really thank yourself for that. Other things I should point out is communication time. It's just something that we all have to do. We get messages, emails, all sorts of things coming at us every day. So I've just got this set up every single day, except Saturday. I tend to give, give myself a rest on Saturday, but it's always there. I make sure that I spend an hour or have an hour to deal with my communication each day, because if I don't, it builds up and I end up with a backlog. And once you get to three, 400 emails that need processing, you know, that's an old, that's an afternoon. I don't have an afternoon to waste trying to catch up with myself. So I'm just spending, I give myself an hour. I don't usually need an hour a day to do it, but it means it's there. I'm always on top. Similarly, admin time every single time. Got to get that in because if I don't, it piles up. And once it piles up, you're stuck. You need to spend a disproportionate amount of time just trying to catch up. And there you go. That's really all you need to know. One more thing though, before we finish this, I should point out that you can now uh, set up a FaceTime call. So here I can set up a FaceTime call. Now, if I remember correctly, when I've tried Google, you actually have more options. You can actually put Google, Cal Google Chat in there or you can put Zoom call in there. It's very simple. The other thing I should point out is that, let's just imagine this is a meeting down here, Apple gives you, just like all the others, you're a place for notes, you can add a URL and you can add an attachment, which means that you can then send that to all the participants because you can invite, just add the email and they will get an email saying somebody set up a call for you. It's all there. So you get all the same functionality that you get in Outlook as well as Google Calendar. It's all there. But with this, you actually can keep everything within one system and as I say, you get travel time, you can quickly set up video calls and send the link and they can join the call. It is such a fantastic tool. And it's one of those tools that, as I say, people tend to forget about because we're trained to use Google Calendar or trained to use Outlook Calendar. But just remember in your little arsenal of productivity tools, if you're in the Apple ecosystem, system, you have this wonderful, wonderful app that's been around for a long time and is really solid. Now, if you wanna learn how to bring all your other tools into using the whole Apple productivity suite, I did a video recently asking that question, can you now build a complete productivity system using only Apple tools? And to watch that video, you just need to click right there.